The winner to organize the 22 FIFA World Cup is Qatar. But hosting an event of this size requires a lot of preparation. New stadiums, state-of-the-art training facilities and a lot more. Human rights groups have highlighted the deaths of migrant workers during the construction. Temperatures can exceed 50 degrees Celsius with almost staggering humidity. The 2022 World Cup kicks off in November, five months later than usual, to spare players and fans the worst of the Gulf's scorching summer heat. Qatar has spent 10 years and $200 billion preparing for these games. A building boom in one of the world's hottest places. And it relied on a global supply chain of migrant workers from the Philippines, Bangladesh, India, and Nepal. Desperate enough to work in any conditions. मेरो नाम सुरेंद्र तामाङ हो मेरो विदेशको फर्स्ट टाइम चाहिँ म 20 वर्षको हुँदाखेरि मलेसिया गएको थिएँ मलेसिया गएर 2 वर्ष बसे त्यो कतर जाँदाखेरि चाहिँ 2015 मा गएको अनि 21 सम्म बसे होला 6 वर्ष सम्म बसेर यो बिरामी कारण कारणले गर्दाखेरि फर्केको इमर्जेन्सीमा मैले अहिले एउटा साथीलाई कन्ट्याक्ट गरेको थिएँ उठाएन फोन अलिक 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 काममा होला त्यही भएर अहिले त्यति बेला उनीहरूको धुमा त काम चल्दा खाना त्यही भएर दिन्छु अहिले अर्को हप्ता पाउँदैन टाइम पनि पाउँदैन अनि फ्री पनि हुँदैन त्यही भएर म गएको टाइममा लगभग मान्छेहरू धेरै ढले त्यही गर्मी कारणले गर्दाखेरि काम गर्दा गर्दै ठाउँमै ढल्ने सिधै त्यस्तो पनि भएको देखेको चाहिँ कोई अब सीधा ही मौरी कौन सा देखेगा जो इस तरह वो देते इस तरह गाने मुने This one was underground Yeah And then it goes five levels up Yeah Okay What does it feel like to see these photos I am like happy now <laughs> You're happy Yeah this one is now it's new one Uh huh Are you working in this yeah. side Yeah It's inside the room It's a like all workers headed for the Gulf, Surendra Tamang passed a health screening before he left Nepal. He was hired as a construction worker on a luxury complex in downtown Doha. It was one of many such projects that sprang up in the rush to prepare for the 2022 Games. He earned the equivalent of $400 a month and sent nearly all of it home. This one, I don't know it's the body's <laughs> name. Well, but I can see why you're proud. It's an amazing structure. Sad boys side map we pass. I'm like sad boys. They bought a regular boys. Some days regular work done. No need to. This pass. I mean, dinner time. They go and rest. They do. 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 They
धेरै गर्मी हुन्छ नाकबाट खुन जाने हुन्छ इत्यादि मान्छेहरू कोही डलेक डलै हुन्छ जिउहरू पुरै पसिनाले पुरै एक घन्टा बाहिर बस्यो भने पुरै भिज्ने क्या यो शरीरहरू कपडाहरू नको जस्तै हुने स्विमिङ गरेर निक्ले जस्तो हुने त्यस्तो हुन्थ्यो पानीले जिउहरू भिज्दा गर्मी त त्यस्तै हो अब कति पचास पचपन्न जस्तो पुग्थ्यो दिउँसो बाह्र बजीतिर झन् त्यति बेला चाहिँ काम गर्नु पर्दैन थियो रेस्ट गर्नु पर्थ्यो गाह्रो छ परिवारको लागि त पैसा अब पैसा त चाहिने हाल्छ एउटा किसानीको घरमा यस्तो त्यति हुँदैन अनि त्यही नभएको कारणले पनि अब देश जाने पनि बाध्यता भयो In Qatar, Surendra suffered headaches and dizzy spells, clear signs of heat stress. On his job site, posters emphasized the need to stay hydrated, but he had to pay for his own water. And some days, when he was working high up on scaffolding, he'd avoid drinking so he wouldn't have to make trips up and down to the bathroom. When he got too sick to work, his employer sent him home. By the time he arrived in Kathmandu, both his kidneys had stopped functioning, the result of heat exposure and chronic dehydration, according to his doctor. Now 31, he will likely be on dialysis for the rest of his life. They check their health system thoroughly here and thoroughly there also before they enter to the services. And still, we find lots of patients returning with kidney failure to our country. Presently, around 600 patients are on dialysis at kidney center in different branches of Nepal. 10% of the patients who are on dialysis at our center golf return cases. The climate is getting hotter and this phenomenon of kidney failure becoming more intense. Is Nepal ready to take care of returning dialysis patients? Or golf will remain same attitude, no responsibility? Or they will change? Something has to be done. Public health experts warn that chronic kidney disease could become a major health epidemic for outdoor workers as the planet continues to warm. And migrant workers are especially vulnerable. Heat is killing workers, but officials in Qatar rarely acknowledge its role. Death certificates record an unusually high rate of what is simply called cardiac arrest among those young, seemingly healthy men who have left home in search of work. So we saw a statistic from 2012 to 2020, there was 571 Nepali workers who died in Qatar due to cardiovascular disease. What does that tell you? Uh, writing cardiac arrest only will not define any underlying disease or what may be the cause of the, the death of that particular person. Immediate cause may be any, like it may be cardiac arrest. There should be some antecedent and the contributor. That was not mentioned in the majority of the death certificate. Our body can acclimatize up to 40 degrees centigrade. If uh, the temperature is more than 40 degrees centigrade, the person will have some sort of heat-related complication. Flights from Kathmandu to Doha have increased substantially over the last decade. Most months have about 150 flights on this route.
In the years since surrender left Qatar, conditions have actually improved for many laborers. We asked a construction company that he worked for about on-site heat labor protections, but they did not reply. So, for sure, the World Cup has accelerated the labor reforms in Qatar. Uh, the ILO works in many, many countries all around the world, and rarely do we see uh, labor reforms adopted with this pace. The International Labor Organization, along with heat scientists, were invited to Qatar to study the impact of heat and humidity on worker health. The result was legislation that increased the window of summer days in which work hours are restricted. It also expanded the midday summer work ban by two hours. Another innovation is the use of a relatively new measurement that combines standard temperature and humidity to determine what is called a wet bulb globe temperature index. This measurement is essential to protecting outdoor workers because humidity impacts the body's ability to sweat and thus cool down. So when on the wet bulb globe temperature index these conditions reach 32.1, uh, then all work must stop. And the third key measure from this legislation is that all outdoor workers must undertake an annual health screening. Qatar has eight stadiums ready for the soccer matches, spread out across Doha. We toured Lusail, the largest of them, which will host the final game of the 2022 World Cup. Although much criticism has been aimed at Qatar because of World Cup construction, the workers building the football stadiums have actually had some of the safest construction jobs in the last decade here, and the new regulations have improved them even more. Today this is a completed stadium with air conditioning and it's fine. When you're building it, it's not. It feels almost as hot inside as it does outside. Every year there are lessons learned, every year the science behind it progresses, and the authorities responsible for defining those timings begin to understand the effect of heat on the workforce and on anybody being outdoors in that time, and they adjust uh, accordingly. Human rights organizations say that thousands of migrant workers have died since Qatar was awarded the rights to host the World Cup. However, very few are tied to the stadiums. In part, this is because the construction has been managed by the government, which has enforced stringent worker protection regulations, including for the private subcontractors working here. The contractors try to play dumb every summer and throw their arms up every summer and say, oh, it's summer working hours again. And we have to explain that, yes, it is. And you're a professional, licensed, certified contractor in the state of Qatar, and those are the Ministry of Labor rules. This summer, Qatar's Ministry of Labor reported nearly 400 violations of the new heat protection policy for outdoor workers. Reports from local clinics show that emissions for heat stress have actually dropped by more than half from last summer, indicating that the new rules may be working. Qatar is the most advanced in terms of legislation when it comes to heat, heat regulation. Yes, it's much easier for people like me and the health and safety managers and officers I work with to slow things down or even stop them completely when we see things getting out of hand. It's much easier to do that now and dial things in before people are pushed beyond a certain limit. It's a very tough battle against private contractors. They're against the clock. They've been paid money to finish. They have liabilities and professional indemnity and they need to finish the work and sometimes they do it regardless at, all, at any cost until we step in, of course, and it's never done at any cost. We needed government permits to visit all construction sites, including this privately run work site near Lusail. Officials from the Ministry of Labor were there and workers spoke to us only in the presence of their supervisors. So how have you been told to manage the heat as workers here in Doha? What would you tell if you had a cousin coming from Nepal to work in Doha? What would you tell him to prepare for the heat? Is it easy to follow these rules? Your advice, is it easy? Yes. Yeah. The games will go on, 
but they leave behind questions about just how much the world's migrant labor force should be asked to sacrifice as wealthy nations pursue perpetual growth in a warming world. You know, the World Cup is not the finishing line. This, I mean, everybody recognizes that this is a longer term endeavor and it will take time to build these new institutions and it will take time to, to change mindsets. The government of Nepal is conflicted when it comes to demanding better conditions from the wealthy nations that help deliver nearly a third of Nepal's GDP each year. Ramu Sapkota is a Nepali journalist who has been investigating labor conditions for Nepal's overseas migrant workers. So I'm mainly writing about the migrations and the displacement, you know. So as a journalist, it is my responsibility to make people aware and to make government responsible by raising this issue. Yo, some woman, how come they cut it? Then all the business man come on us. How to do it? Love, bye, bye. Well, Qatar, my come, go to go. We spoke with a group of men who are aware of the difficult working conditions in the Gulf, but most still plan to go. I work in Qatar. Qatar? Yes. Qatar. Malaysia, Saudi, and Qatar. Dubai. Dubai. Malaysia. Qatar. Qatar. Saudi, Saudi. Saudi. Qatar. Qatar. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to Qatar. For a few more time, we go to Qatar. Qatar. You're going to Qatar? Yeah. 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 Back in Kathmandu, Surendra, who once dreamed of watching the World Cup from a stadium in Qatar, is instead just trying to stay healthy. Thank you.